I recently read in a forum post, I think I'm oversampled. Is this a problem? Now there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, if he just thinks he's oversampled, does he even know what he means? Secondly, is he really oversampled? And if he is, rightfully so, is it a problem? And if it is a problem, can we do something about it? So, a lot to talk about, let's get right to it. Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thank you for watching my channel. So let's tackle this topic systematically. We want to talk about oversampling. So let's go a step back, what do we mean by sampling? Sampling means in principle that we take with our camera samples of the light that comes from the telescope. So let's start with the telescope. As you might know, every telescope has a certain limit to which it can resolve the light that actually comes to it. So the higher the resolution is, the sharper the image, the more we can actually magnify of what is provided to us. So let's assume that this is the resolution that our telescope provides to us. But the issue here is that this resolution is not absolute. It depends on the seeing. So this might be for an average seeing. And when the seeing gets worse, the resolution gets worse. And if the seeing gets better, the resolution gets better. But let's assume for average seeing, that's the resolution that the telescope provides to us. And now here you see a star as provided by the resolution of the telescope. So now as a next step, we plug a camera right to the back of the telescope. And in the ideal case, the pixel size that the camera provides matches exactly to the resolution that the telescope provides. Now, as you can see here, the red grid, which symbolizes the camera, matches exactly to the black grid, which symbolizes the telescope. Now, in this case, all is fine. And if that applies to you, you can stop watching. Now, as a next step, for a brief moment, let's address undersampling. Undersampling looks like this. So the resolution, the pixel size of your camera is much bigger than the resolution that the telescope would provide. Now, why is this a problem? Now, let's look how the star would look like if recorded with such a camera. You get from this nice little star you had, this huge blob. And that's ex exactly how it will look now, the picture. You have all these squares instead of nice round looking stars. So what can we do about undersampling? Unfortunately, not much. Only one thing. And that is going back to the store and get a better camera. With that, let's finally move to oversampling. And oversampling is obviously exactly the opposite from undersampling. It will look like this. So you bought the nicest camera on earth. You're very proud, very small pixels. Unfortunately, your telescope does not provide this resolution. So here for each of the pixels the telescope provides, you get four pixels on the camera. And with that, we come to the question the guy in the forum asked, is this a problem? And the answer is, mm, yeah, kind of. It's not as big as a problem as undersampling, but it's also not nice out of two reasons. First of all, you underutilize the gray camera you bought. Second of all, you kind of lie to yourself. Starting with the lying, what do I mean? You bought this great camera and it tells you it has a resolution of, let's say, 2000 times 3000 pixels. The issue is now that when you actually zoom into your picture, you will realize that you practically only have half the picture size than you thought. So you cannot zoom in as much as you actually thought you could. But the much bigger issue is that you underutilize your camera and actually do not reach the signal to noise ratio that you could achieve with it. I put this blue box around these four pixels which match one pixel of your telescope. 
What actually happens now, if the light comes from your telescope, it gets divided by four. And each of the four pixels within this frame only gets a quarter of the light. So if actually the light would only hit one pixel of your camera, there would be much more light gathered, and so it would be much easier to divide the signal from the noise. The good thing is that there is an easy way to mitigate this issue, and that's what we call binning. You might have seen this setting already in your camera settings, and you might have wondered what it is. You see the 2x2 two two binning, 3x3, three 4x4. Three, four four. So what this actually means that it combines an array of pixels to one. So in this example here, it would combine these four pixels into one, which matches the blue box. Obviously with that, you lose on resolution. But given that the telescope anyway does not provide this resolution to you, it's anyway meaningless. And so it's better to actually have a theoretical pixel size that matches your telescope than an artificial higher one, which is of no use. So the last question would be, how do we even know if we are under or oversampled? And for that, we have a handy tool called AstroTools in the internet. And let me show you how this works. What I want you to go is to the Astronomy Tools site. I put a link in below the description. There's a lot of great tools you can actually find here. But for our purpose, we go now to Calculators and then to CCD Suitability. There's a lot of blah blah, we can just scroll through and let's go right to the tool down below here. So I will enter now my telescope and my camera just for illustration purposes. So my scope, I can search here for it, is the Celestron, and I get you to the CPC 800. It automatically figures out the focal length. And now be careful, if you use a reducer, please enter it here. So I have a 0.63 reducer. Next is the camera. Also here we can search for it here, the ASI 2600 MC. And that's already all we have to enter. And now we get the first result for OK seeing. And it tells me that I'm a little bit oversampled. As you can see what is green, that is a perfect sampling. If we get here in the bluish or even violet, that's oversampled. If we get into the yellow or red, we are undersampled. So what's my conclusion here? I'm a little bit oversampled, but not that much in OK seeing. If the seeing is good, it even looks perfect. So for me, as long as I use the reducer, this is fine. I will do nothing and I will be happy. A little bit of oversampling is absolutely OK. But if I now screw the reducer off, picture looks much different. Even in good seeing, I'm at the border, and if the seeing is just okay-ish, I get deep into the oversampling rate. So what I can do now, I can do binning. And if I go now to a 2x2, two two, I'm fine again. So that's how you use this tool. So here we can figure out, first of all, if we are oversampled, or undersampled, and how much we have to bin to actually mitigate that. So, that was it already again. I hope I was able to give you some insights into this rather complex topic. And if you have any more questions, please leave it in the comments below. And if you like my channel, please click the subscribe button below and give me a like. Thank you. See you next time and clear skies.